Hi, welcome back to my class in Integral Calculus. In the last lesson, we took up integration by parts, which is the first of the techniques of integration. For today, we will take up another technique of integration, and it's called integration by partial fraction. And this technique has four cases, and for today, we will take up only the first case of integration by partial fraction. In integration by partial fraction, the integrand is a rational expression. That is the ratio of two algebraic expressions. And uh, in integration by partial fraction, we write this rational expression as a sum of partial fractions. In particular, the denominator of the rational expression in the integrand should be factorable into linear or quadratic factors. And uh, we write the given integrand, which is a rational expression, as a sum of partial fractions where the denominators are the factors of the denominator of the rational expression in the integrand. And the numerators in the partial fractions are constant terms which are to be found. So the given in integration by partial fraction is an integral of this form, p of x over q of x. The variable of integration in this uh, expression is x. And p of x over q of x is a rational expression. Where the algebraic expression q of x is factorable. If q of x is factorable, we can integrate this by par partial fraction. To integrate by partial fraction, we should write the denominator q of x. We should factor out the denominator q of x. After factoring q of x, we write this rational expression as a sum of partial fractions. This is a partial fraction, another partial fraction, another partial fraction, another partial fraction. If the algebraic expression, expression q of x, has n factors, then you have a sum of n partial fractions. And from this, uh, this symbol means equivalent. This rational expression is equivalent to this sum of partial fractions for some specific values of a1, a2, a3, up to a sub n. Once we know the exact values of these constants, a1, a2, a3, up to a sub n, then we will change this symbol to equal sign. But uh, for now, we write, we say that this rational expression is equivalent to the sum of partial fractions. And once we have found this constant, the numerators a1, a2, a3, up to a sub n, we integrate both sides with respect to x. Integrating the left-hand side with respect to x, we get the given integral p of x over q of x we integrate with respect to x. And the right-hand side, we also integrate with respect to x. And apply a, an integration rule that says the integral of a sum is equal to the sum of the integrals. So the integral of this sum of partial fraction is equal to the integral of the first term with respect to x plus the integral of the second term with respect to x, plus the integral of the third term with respect to x, plus up to plus the integral of the nth term with respect to x. Now we take an example one to apply integration by partial fraction case one. In case one, the factors of the rational expression q of x are all linear expressions. And each of these uh, linear factor is unique. That is, no two factors of the algebraic expression q of x are the same or equal. Again, in case one of integration by partial fraction, the factors of the expression q of x are all linear factors. And these factors are all different. Consider example one. Evaluate the integral of 2 dx over x squared plus x. In this given integral, the expression p of x over q of x is the rational expression 2 over x squared plus x. 
And you can see that the denominator x squared plus x is factorable. And you can see further that x is a common factor of this binomial because the first term has x raised to the power 2 and the second term is has x. Therefore, x is a common factor and we factor out x. The given rational expression 2 over x squared plus x is now equal to Rational expression 2 over x squared plus x is equal to 2 over x times x plus 1, where we factor out x from x squared plus x. The common factor is x, and to get the other factor, we divide each term by the common factor. x squared divided by x is x, plus x divided by x is 1. Now, this is uh, integration by partial fraction case 1 because the factors of Q of x, this is your Q of x, the denominator x squared plus x, are unique and uh, linear. x is linear because the exponent of x is 1, x plus 1 is linear because the exponent of x is 1. And these two factors, and x, x and x plus 1, are both different. So this is integration by partial fraction case 1. And we write this rational expression as equivalent to a constant. Now for the constants in our example, instead of using a1, a2, a3, I will use a, b, c, but you can also use a1, a2, a3. This rational expression is now equivalent to a constant over the first factor, the first linear factor x. plus a second constant, a2, but I will use b. Over the second linear factor, x plus 1. And there is no more third term. We only have a sum of two partial fractions because our expression q of x has only two linear factors. Now, from this expression, we solve for the values of a and b by eliminating the denominators. And to eliminate the denominator, we multiply both sides of this expression by the LCB, which is x times x plus 1. And we apply the distributive property of multiplication. We multiply the left-hand side by x times x plus 1. If you multiply this by x times x plus 1, x and x will cancel. x plus 1 over x plus 1 will cancel out. And what is left at the left-hand side is 2. Now we still write equivalent because we do not know yet the values of a and b. For the right hand side, we multiply each term of the right hand side by the LCB x times x plus 1. If you multiply this a over x by x times x plus 1, x and x will cancel out and what is left is a multiplied by x plus 1. plus we multiply b over x plus 1 by x times x plus 1. And you can see that x plus 1 over x plus 1 is 1. So x plus 1 over x plus 1 will cancel out and what is left in the numerator is b multiplied by x for the second term. After removing the denominator, we, the denominators, we now remove the grouping symbols 
from the right hand side by distributive property of multiplication multiply x plus 1 by a hence 2 is equivalent to ax plus a plus bx After removing the grouping symbols, you collect all the terms with x and all the constant terms. Hence, 2 is equivalent to collect ax and bx into one group. And collect all the constant terms, the terms with no variable x. And there is only one term with no x, so we simply write plus a. After grouping the like terms, the terms with x, we factor out the common factor x from ax plus bx. Now 2 is equivalent to... If you factor out x, you will get a plus b multiplied by x. Plus the constant term a. If you multiply a plus b by x, you get a multiplied by x, ax plus b multiplied by x, bx which is ax plus bx. Now, after expressing the right-hand side in factored form, we now equate the coefficients of the variables and the constant term to the coefficient of the same variable at the left-hand side and the constant at the right we equate to the constant at the left-hand side. Now, the coefficient of x at the right-hand side is a plus b. And we equate a, a plus b with the coefficient of x at the left-hand side. But you will say that the left-hand side has no x. If the left-hand side has no x, you equate a plus b, the coefficient of x, to 0. Now, why 0? Because at uh, the left-hand side, you can always add 0x, and 0x has no effect to the left-hand side because 0x plus 2 is still 0, 2. And you can simply add 0x so that you will know that a plus b coefficient of x at the right-hand side should be equal to 0, the coefficient of 0x at the left-hand side, if you would add 0x at the left-hand side. But there is no need to add 0x at the left-hand side if uh, there is no term containing x at the left-hand side. Simply equate the coefficient of x at the right-hand side to 0. That is, we, we have an understanding that the coefficient of x at the left-hand side is 0 if you would add 0x to the left-hand side. And the constant term at the right-hand side, A, you equate to the constant term at the left-hand side. Hence, A is equal to 2. Now, we have a system of linear equations. The first is linear in A and B, A plus B equals 0. And the second uh, equation is linear in one variable, A. And you solve for A and B from this system of linear equations. And it is clear that A is equal to 2. And we can solve for B using equation 1. A plus B equals 0 by substituting 2 for A. If A is equal to 2, you get 2 plus B equals 0. We substitute 2 for a in the first equation, we get 2 plus b equals 0. 
And to solve for B, we simply transpose positive 2 to the other side of the equation. And when we transpose, we take the opposite sign of 2, hence from positive, it becomes negative 2. Therefore, the values of A and B are 2 and negative 2 respectively. And we will substitute these values of A and B here. And we, we will now say that 2 over x squared plus x is equal to the sum of the partial fraction 2 over x because A is 2. And B over x plus 1 where B equals negative 2. And after substituting the values of A and B into this equation, we now integrate both sides with respect to x. Now substitute the values of A and B we obtained by solving the system of linear equations we have earlier into this equation, 2 over x squared plus 1, as 2 over x squared plus x is equal to the sum of the partial fractions a over x and b over x plus 1, where a is 2 and b equals negative 2. a is 2 over x plus b B is negative 2 over x plus 1. After the substitution, we now integrate both sides with respect to x. We integrate the left-hand side. Integrate the left hand side 2 over x squared plus x with respect to x. So we write dx. And this integral is equal to the integral. But before we do that, we you can see that the rational expression 2 over x squared plus x is now equal to the sum of these partial fractions. If you simplify this, you should get the given rational expression or the integral 2 over x squared plus x. And the integral of the left hand side is equal to the integral of the sum of partial fractions. So we integrate 2 over x with respect to x. Plus the integral of negative 2 over x plus 1. But positive times negative is negative. Or minus the integral of 2 over x plus 1 with respect to x. Now each of these uh, integrals is now integrable or can be integrated using one of the integration rules for the integral of du over u. From our past lesson, one of the integration rules says that the integral of du over u is equal to ln u plus c. Now, the first integral, this is the given integral that we want to evaluate. And the first integral is equal to 2. Times the integral of dx over x. This is, uh, again, using one of the integration rules that says the integral of a constant times a function is equal to the constant times the integral of the function. And the integral of the x over x is ln x using this integration rule. Minus 2 times the integral of the x over x plus 1. Now for the second term, the integral of the x over x plus 1 is ln of x plus 1. 
if the coefficient of x is 1, then you can directly write ln of x plus 1 for the integral of dx over x plus 1. But if the coefficient of x is not 1, you have to make use of substitution to reduce the given integral into this form. Now, for to show uh, an example, I will let u be equal to x plus 1. The purpose of this substitution u equals x plus 1 is to reduce this integral into this form where you have in the denominator a variable u with exponent 1 and coefficient 1. But here in this integral there is a constant term 1. So we make use of the substitution u equals x plus 1. If u equals x plus 1, differentiating both sides, the left hand side with respect to u, we get du. And the derivative of the right-hand side, the derivative of x is 1 times dx, derivative of 1 is 0. Hence, the derivative of x plus 1 is dx. Now, the first term is 2. And the integral of dx over x using this integration rule is ln of x. minus 2 dx is equal to du and x plus 1 is equal to u. The first term can still be simplified using a property of natural logarithm. One of the properties of natural logarithm says that n times ln of x is equal to ln of x to the n. Thus, using this property of natural logarithm, we can write the coefficient 2 of ln of x as exponent of x. Hence, by this property of natural logarithm, 2 times ln of x is equal to ln x to the power 2. where 2 here is n. And the second term is minus 2. The integral of du over u using this integration rule is ln of u. Since we are done with integrating both of the two integrals, we now write a constant term c. plus c. And we have to replace u with x plus 1. We make use of this substitution. u equals x plus 1. And we have to write the answer in original variable x. So we replace u with x plus 1. And we get and n of x squared minus 2 times ln of u x plus 1. Now, the constant c I will write as ln of c. Now, why did I write c as ln of c? I wrote c as ln of c so that I can combine the constant with these first two terms containing natural logarithm. Now all the terms have natural logarithm and they can be simplified using properties of natural logarithm. And, and anyway, ln of c is still a constant. And the constant of integration c here can, is any constant and ln of c is still and remains a constant. 
and we only like C as ln of C so that we can combine ln of C with the other two terms in the answer by using properties of natural logarithm. Again, the second term can be simplified by writing 2 as the exponent of x plus 1 using this property of natural logarithm. The first term is the same ln of x squared. minus ln of x plus 1 to the power 2. Plus ln of c, a constant. Now we combine ln of x squared minus ln of x plus 1 squared using a property of natural logarithm. One of the properties of natural logarithm says that ln of a over b is equal to ln of a minus ln of b. Hence, ln of x squared minus ln of x plus 1 by using this property of natural logarithm where a is, where a is x squared and b is x plus 1 is squared. By this property of natural logarithm, we can write ln x squared minus ln of x squared, uh, ln of x plus 1 squared as ln of x squared over x plus 1 squared plus ln of c. Thus, the difference ln x squared minus ln of x plus 1 squared is equal to ln of x squared, that's your a, over x plus 1 squared, where b is equal to x plus 1 squared, plus ln of c. And we combine the sum of two natural logarithm using another property of natural logarithm. The property of natural logarithm says that ln of the product AB is equal to ln of A plus ln of B. And we apply this particular property of natural logarithm to this sum where A now is x squared over x plus 1 squared and B is equal to C. Hence, by this property of natural logarithm, we can write this as ln of c. We multiply c by x squared over x plus 1 squared. And this can still be simplified by using property of exponent. The property of exponent says that x over y to the power n is equal to x to the n over y to the power n. And we apply this property to x squared over x plus 1 squared. Except that we start from the right hand side, x to the n over y to the n is equal to x over y to the power n. You notice that the exponent of x and y are equal and both equal to n. 
uh, seen this expression, x squared has exponent 2, x plus 1 has exponent 2. So we can apply this property of exponent to write the final answer as ln of c We write the final answer as ln of c times the square of x over x plus 1. And that completes the solution of example 1. We take another example where the denominator of the rational, expo the rational expression in the given integrand is a quadratic expression that is factorable into linear factors that are both different. Our second example for integration by partial fraction case 1, consider the following problem. Evaluate the integral of 3x plus 1 dx, 3x plus 1 over 2x squared minus x minus 6 with respect to x. In this given integral, the rational expression p of x over q of x is 3x plus 1 over 2x squared minus x minus 6. And we will now write this rational expression 3x plus 1 over 2x squared minus x minus 6 as a sum of partial fractions. But we write, we factor out first 2x squared minus x minus 6 by a factoring, a method for factoring known as which stands for trial and error. We factor out the quadratic expression 2x squared minus x minus 6 by this method, trial and error. We start by factoring the first term of this quadratic expression. The first term is 2x squared, and the factors of 2x squared are 2x and x. And we now factor out the constant term minus 6. That's where we will use this trial and error method. Because minus 6 has many factors but when you factor minus 6 one of the factors should be positive and the other should be negative so that when you multiply the two factors the product is negative 6 and we, we would try negative 3 and positive 2 I will write negative 3 here and plus 2 or positive 2 I will add to x we have, now we check if these factors are correct. 2x times x is 2x squared. 2x times 2 is 4x. And minus 3 times x is minus 3x. So that's 4x minus x. But the second term is we have 2x times 2 is 4x, and minus 3 times x is minus 3x, and 4x minus 3x is x, but the middle term is negative. So we have to change the sign, we make this plus 3, and we make this minus 2. Now we check again, 2x times x is 2x squared. 2x times negative 2 is negative 4x. And 3 times x is 3x. And minus 4x plus 3x is negative x. We change the middle term of the quadratic expression. And finally, three, positive 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. Hence, we get all the 
terms of the quadratic expression correct. Therefore, these are the factors of 2x squared minus x minus 6, the factors of 2x squared minus 6, 2x squared minus x minus 6 are 2x plus 3 and x minus 2. And these factors are both linear factors because the exponent of x is 1 here, the exponent of x here is 1. And these linear factors are different. Therefore, we apply integration by partial fraction, case 1, to integrate the given integral. This rational expression is equal to this rational expression, except that in this rational expression, we write the quadratic expression in factored form. And we will now write this rational expression as a sum of partial fractions, and it will be a sum of two partial fractions because we have only two linear factors for the quadratic expression 2x squared minus x minus 6. So we write this as equivalent to the first partial fraction is, is the ratio of a constant which we write as a over the first linear factor 2x plus 3 plus a second partial fraction which is a ratio of another constant that I will denote by b over the second linear factor x minus 2. And now we will find the values of the constants a and b by first eliminating the denominators. And we multiply both sides of this expression, equivalent expressions, by the LCD 2x plus 3 and x minus 2. If you multiply the left hand side, 3x plus 1 over quantity 2x plus 3 times quantity x minus 2 by 2x plus 3 times x minus 2, 2x plus 3 times x minus 2 will cancel out with 2x plus 3 and x minus 2 in the denominator because this product 2x plus 3 times x minus 2 over 2x plus 3 times x minus 2 is simply 1. And we are left with 3x plus 1 at the left hand side. And this expression 3x plus 1 is equivalent to an expression if obtained by multiplying this sum by this LCD 2x plus 3 and x minus 2. If you multiply the First term a over 2x plus 3 by 2x plus 3 oh, times x minus 2, 2x plus 3, and 2x plus 3 will cancel out. And what is left in the first term is a multiplied by x minus 2. Plus, we also multiply the second term by the second term b over x minus 2, we also multiply by 2x plus 3 multiplied by x minus 2. And if you do that, x minus 2 over x minus 2 will cancel out and what is left in the second term is b multiplied by 2x plus 3. Now we have removed the denominators from this equivalent expression. Now we remove the grouping symbols by applying the multiplication property of addition over, uh, sorry, multiplication property over addition. That is, we distribute a to x minus 2 and we distribute b to 2x plus 3 by multiplying x minus 2 by a and multiplying 2x plus 3 by b. The left hand side is the same, 3x plus 1. 
is equivalent to ax a multiplied by minus 2 is minus 2a we have b times 2x is 2bx and b multiplied by 3 is 3b After removing the grouping symbols, we collect like terms in into one group. We start with, with the terms with, with x, containing x. We have ax and 2bx. We collect them into one group. The left-hand side is the same, 3x plus 1. We collect ax plus 2bx. And we collect all the constant terms into one group, the terms without x. We have minus 2a plus 3b. After collecting the terms, the like terms into, into one group, factor out the common factor in the group of like terms. Like in the first group, we have ax plus 2bx. The common factor is x. Both terms have x, so factor out x from ax and 2bx. The left-hand side is the same. We have 3x plus 1. If you factor out x from ax, what is left is a. Plus, factor out x from 2bx, what is left is 2b. And multiply this by the common factor, the common factor x plus the constant term. Minus 2a is a constant plus 3b is a constant, thus the sum of these constants is a constant. After factoring out the common factor, we now equate the coefficients of the variables at the right hand side to the coefficient of the same variable at the left hand side. At the right hand side, coefficient of x is a plus 2b and we equate this coefficient of x at the right hand side to the coefficient of x at the left hand side, the coefficient of x at the left hand side is 3. Now, if the left hand side has no term containing x, for instance, the, instance the left hand side is only 1, you will equate a plus 2b to 0. Because you can always add 0x at the left hand side and it has no effect to the constant term at the left hand side. But there is a term containing x at the left hand side with coefficient of 3. So we equate a plus 2b, the coefficient of x at the right hand side, to 3. The coefficient of x at the left hand side. And the constant term minus 2a plus 3b, we equate to the constant term at the left hand side. We write 2a plus 3b minus 2a. is equal to 3. Sorry. 1. The constant term at the left hand side is minus 2a plus 3b. We equate to the constant term at the left hand side, the term without x. A constant 1. Now we have a system of two linear equations in variables a and b. This is a system of linear equations in two variables a and b. And you use an algebraic elimination method to solve for a and b from this system of two linear equations into variables a and b. Now I will eliminate a. The coefficient of I will eliminate a by addition by multiplying the equation one. A plus two b equals three by positive two. So that a will have a coefficient of two and if you add 2a to minus 2a, the sum is 0, and a will be eliminated. So I will eliminate, eliminate a by multiplying equation 1 by 2.
And we apply the distributive property of multiplication over addition. We have 2 multiplied by A is 2A. Plus 2 multiplied by 2B is 4B. And we also multiply the right hand side by 2. 2 multiplied by 3 is 6. And to this, we add the second linear equation, minus 2a plus 3b equals 1. And you add 2a plus minus 2a is 0. And we have 4b plus 3b, 4b plus 3b is 7b. Is equal to 6 plus 1 is 7. And 7b equals 7 implies that b is equal to 1. From this equation, we divide both sides by 7. 7b seven, divided by 7 is b. 7 divided by 7 is 1 at the right hand side. Now, we now know the value of B, and we have to solve for A using equation 1 or equation 2. I will use equation 1, A plus 2B equals 3, to solve for A. It's easier to use equation 1 because the coefficient of A in equation 1 is 1. And from this equation, A is equal to 3, transpose 2B to the right hand side we get A is equal to 3 this positive 2B transposed to the other side we take the opposite sign of 2B and we get negative or minus 2B and we substitute the value of B into this equation where B is equal to 1 we have 3 minus 2 times B is 1 and we get A is 1 now we know the values of the constants A and B and they are both equal to 1 and we substitute the value of A1 and the value of B1 into this expression and we can now equate 3x plus 1 over 2x squared minus x minus 6 we can now equate to 1 over 2x plus 3 plus b1 over x minus 2. And we will integrate both sides with respect to x. Because this uh, given rational expression, which is the integral of the given integral, is equal to the sum of the fractions, the sum of the, the, sum of the partial fractions 1 over 2x plus 3 and 1 over x minus 2. We continue, we now substitute the value of a and b, which are both equal to 1, into this expression, to the sum of partial fractions. Now we write the uh, integral 3x plus 1 over 2x squared minus x minus 6 is equal to 1 over 2x plus 3 plus 1 over x minus 2. I have substituted the value of A1 and the value of B1. After the substitution, we integrate both sides of this equation. So the, this rational expression, which is the integral of the given integral, is equal to the sum of these partial fractions. If you combine these two partial fractions, these two fractions, it would simplify to this given integral. We integrate both sides with respect to x. 
the Laplace side we integrate with respect to x. We write Vx to, indi to indicate that the variable of integration is x. And we also integrate the right hand side with respect to x. Hence, the left hand side is now the given integral, integral of 3x plus 1. over 2x squared minus x minus 6 integrate with respect to x is equal to we apply the one of the properties one of the integration rules the integral of a sum is equal to the sum of the integrals hence the integral of the sum of this partial fractions is equal to the integral of 1 over 2x plus 3 with respect to x Plus the integral of 1 over x minus 2 with respect to x. And to integrate each term, each of these integrals, we apply one of the integration rules for the integral of du over u. You should remember that the integral of du over u is equal to ln of u plus a constant of integration. Now to write this in this form, I will let u for the first term be equal to 2x plus 3. And differentiating both sides, derivative of u is du. And derivative of 2x plus 3 is 2 multiplied by dx. The derivative of 3 is constant. Hence, the derivative of 2x plus 3 is equal to derivative of 2x, 2 times dx. And we need to solve for dx from this equation. Dividing both sides by 2. 2 dx divided by 2 is dx. And we also divide the other side, du by 2. du divided by 2. For the first term, we replace 2x plus 3 with u. And we replace dx with du over 2. For the second term, I will let u be equal to x minus 2 to express the second integral in this form, du over u. For the second integral, I will let u be equal to x minus 2. Again, differentiating both sides, derivative of u is 1 times du. Is equal to derivative of x minus 2, derivative of x is 1 times dx. And the derivative of minus 2 is 0. As the for the second term, we replace dx with du and replace x minus 2 with u. And you will get an integral in this form, integral of du over u. The first term is now equal to the integral of dx, du over 2. over 2x plus 3. 2x plus 3 is equal to u. Plus the second term, integral of dx. dx is du. Over x minus 2 is u. Now, 
2 here or 1 half is a constant term. So we can take that out of the integral sign by applying the integration rule. The integral of a constant times a function is equal to the constant. In this uh, first term, the constant is 1 half times the integral of the function. Since the integral of du over 2u is equal to 1 half. times the integral of du over u. The second term is integrable. The integral of du over u is ln of u. Where u for the second term is equal to x minus 2. The first term now is 1 half times the integral of du over u is ln u. For the first term, u is equal to 2x plus 3 plus ln u Now, we substitute the value of u for the second term. The value of u is x minus 2. Hence, ln of u is equal to ln of x minus 2. Since we have integrated both terms, we now write the constant term, but instead of simply writing capital C, we use ln of C so that we can combine ln of C with the other two terms containing natural logarithm or ln. For the first term, we replace u with 2x plus 3. And we have 1 half The first term is 1 half ln of u u for the first term is 2x plus 3 Now we combine ln of x minus 2 plus ln of c by using property of natural logarithm that says One of the properties of natural logarithm says that the sum of ln of a and ln of b is equal to the ln of the product a times b. Where in the last two terms, x minus 2 is your a and the constant term c is b. Hence, the second term, the last two terms, ln of x minus 2 plus ln of c can be written as ln of the product of c and x minus 2 by this property of natural logarithm. And we will still simplify this expression. For the first term, we apply another property of natural logarithm. 1 half ln of 2x plus 3 can be written as ln of 2x plus 3 to the power 1 half. Which would mean that 2x plus 3 raised to 1 half is the same as the square root of 2x plus 3. And then we combine that to ln of this product c times x minus 2 using this property of natural logarithm. To simplify 1 half times ln of 2x plus 3, we apply this property of natural logarithm that says ln of x to the n is equal to n times ln of x. But to simplify this, we start from the right hand side where n is 1 half. And by this property of natural logarithm, 1 half times ln of 2x plus 3 is equal to ln of 2x plus 3 raised to 1 half.
plus the second term, ln of the product of c and x minus 2. We simplify further ln of 2x plus 3 raised to 1 half by property of one of the properties of radicals is equal to ln of the square root of 2x plus 3. Plus the second term. Again, we combine these two terms by applying property of natural logarithm that says the the sum of ln of a and ln of b is equal to ln of the product of a and b where a is square root of 2 square root of 2x plus 3 and b is equal to the product of c times x minus 2. Hence, this sum is equal to ln of c times x minus 2 times square root of 2x plus 3 by this property of natural logarithm. And this is the integral of the, the integral of 3x plus 1 over 2x squared minus x minus 6 with respect to x. And I wrote the absolute value notation to make sure that this product is a positive real number. Because natural logarithm is defined only for the positive real numbers. And that completes our example 2. And for your practice, please try the following exercises. Evaluate, we have number one, integral of 5 dx over 2x squared plus x. And number two, evaluate, that means integrate 3x minus 7x with respect to x. Integrate 3 minus 7x over 6x squared minus 7x minus 3 with respect to x. In the next lesson, we will take a third example uh, for applying integration by partial fraction case 1 and then we will proceed with integration by partial fraction case 2. If you have question about the lesson today, you ask your questions in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Art Kalison the channel of learning and leisure and you may also ask your friends your classmates relatives and family members to subscribe to my youtube channel art Kalisa, so they may learn as well thank you for joining me in my class today in integral calculus